All right, so let's go ahead and get started with class. Um, I want to show you guys a few things. So I have my screen shared up here, right? Okay, cool. I want to show you a few things. Let me turn these lights off over here. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about seller appointments. And the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how I got ready for the seller appointment we're about to have. And um, I want to put some links up in the chat so you guys can see it. So I'm going to do that from here so you can see where I'm going. So I first things first, MetroList is your best friend for getting ready for a listing. Uh, it's the best. So I'm just going to go to MetroList. And I'll log in. Okay, so everybody's familiar with this page, right? Okay, if you're not, please go log into MetroList and play around with this because there's a lot of resources on here for you, including free training. Boom. So we don't do a lot of MetroList trainings because MetroList gives their own training. So you can go in there and learn directly from them and play around with the system itself. Okay, so first things first, I always pull the tax record ahead of time of the listing to make sure that the person that I'm talking to is the owner. And I like to verify the information when I go to the property. So today we're going to talk about 3036 Marywood. And when I pull the tax record, it gives me this, and then I can print a little report. So I hit print, quick print, and then it prints this PDF for me. Look at that. And I'm going to put this in the chat for you guys so you can open this up in a separate screen and use it to review or look at that. Hopefully it helps. There you go. Now everybody has the property details for this property. That's the tax record. Hi. This is Lily. Hi, Lily. Okay, so tax record. It's going to tell you, let's look at it real quick, everything about the property. Five bedroom, three bath, square footage. It tells you the owner's name. Tells you the last time it was sold, or it tells you characteristics. It tells you last. Oops. Damn it! Sorry. I didn't know it was going like this. Okay. Fine. I'm in the middle of it. So the last time it closed. So you know when they bought it. Why would it be important to know when a seller bought a house? No idea. I'm trying to think in my head, like, why would it be like to make, is that a tax, is that a to make sure that it, they've owned it for at least two years? Yeah, you want to make sure that they've, owned, that they've owned it for at least two years so they don't pay capital gains tax. You have to own a property and live in it for two out of the last five years in order for you to not pay capital gains tax. Capital gains tax is 33 and a third percent. It's very high. And if you're a single person, you get up to $250,000 tax free from the sale of a property after two years. And if you're a married couple, you get up to $500,000. So kudos to you married folks. <laughs> Can you say that statement again about make sure they have owned it for two years less? If they've owned it less than two years, they're going to pay capital gains tax on whatever they gain from the sale of the property. And that's how much? 30%? 33 and a third percent. Okay, also it tells you when did they last mortgage the property. So my people mortgaged this property in June of 2020 for 441. So I know they at least owe that much. 
at least they owe that much. Or at the most, sorry, at the most they owe that much. So when I read my comps and I see, oh, this house is only worth 500,000, do I go on that listing appointment? If they owe $444,000 as of last year and the house is only worth 500,000, do we need to have a different kind of discussion with them? Like don't sell? <laughs> like you can't sell, can't afford to sell. Yeah. Unless they've made a significant payment towards that balance, they cannot afford to sell. So 33.3% is owed to the uh, sale price of the house? It's, it's at the gain, the gain from the amount that you bought it for and the amount that you gained. That's a lot, huh? It can be, yes. Okay, so you want to know what their last mortgage was. And I usually ask people, what do you currently owe on your mortgage? Lucky for them, for them, they owed about 420 and we're in contract on these people's house for about 7, 780. So they're going to be just fine. They're going to net about $300,000. Okay, so I print this up and I take this with me. Next thing, I like to take with me the cloud CMA. So I create a cloud CMA using comparable sales from the MLS. In the training, they have training on how to do this in the MLS training. It's fantastic. That's how I learned how to do it. And it creates this wonderful PDF for me. You can download load that for you guys and put it in the chat. All of this is just so that I can put things in the chat. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be the, that's my listing presentation that I just put into the chat. And this is what I use as a listing presentation. And I usually like to send this to them ahead of time. So this, I think I've gone over this before, but it's got a letter to the seller, it's got my resume on here. What's a CMA? All of this is created by MetroList. I didn't do anything but my resume and add the listings in. It gives you a map. Breaks it down, what size are they compared to the subject property. So I like to send this to them ahead of time just so that they can take a look at the listings and they can compare it to their property. What I really like about this is that there's this section right here after the listings that talks about what I'm my marketing action plan. Part of this was created, but part of it I updated for myself. And it talks about intelligent pricing and timing. This is the number one thing that I talk to my sellers about, not overpricing their home, making sure that their home is not overpriced. If it is overpriced, it will sit on the market and we won't have any buyers and they're going to wind up putting themselves in our position to lose money. We have to price it. And you can see that it actually suggests that you price it 15% under market value. A lot. Right? So I talked to them about why it's important to do that. And then it talks to them about timing. And you guys should know this as well as agents. The activity that you receive in the first two weeks is the most important activity you will see will see will receive in the sale of the home. If you mess up in the first two weeks, you mess up the home sale. Because the first two weeks are imperative to get first impressions on the market and to get it sold. If it's on more than two weeks, you get buyers like me out there and you have to drop that price. Down. So if the pictures are wrong, if the if the house doesn't go on the market correctly, if it's not put out there to the internet on time, things like that. If you put it up on the wrong day of the week, there are more things that affect the amount of money that you're going to get for a seller. You wouldn't think it, but the day of the week matters. Talks about why they need a real estate professional. I love that because it tells them why they need me so I don't have to. Talks about curb appeal, first impressions that last, showings and open house checklists. I've got ratings on here and reviews. So I put that in the chat for you guys too. And then 
we'll email this out to everybody when we send out the class. So I print that up. I have that with me. And then I go to car.org. And I also bring with me some documents, including the listing agreement, as well as Okay. Oh, Lord. Yay. Okay, cool. <laughs> if that went on for much longer, it was going to be over. <laughs> okay. So. Um, the contract forms that I need to take with me on a listing are the residential listing agreement, my AVID listing agent visual inspection disclosure, the TDS, and the SPQ. So I'm going to go into my documents here. And I've got listing agreement. Agent visual inspection disclosure, real estate transfer disclosure statement, TDS, and the seller property questionnaire, SPQ. Print those up. I'm oh, sorry, what's this website again? This is car.org. Oh my god. Okay. Now I put that in the chat for you guys as well. Now you have all the paperwork that I bring with me to my listing appointment. Now I'm going to put um, okay, so now I want to show you what I like to use. Amy, was that the uh, the SPQ, the TDS, the AVID, the listing agreement, and then what was the fifth one? There's no fifth one. Oh, I'm sorry. Was there only four? Yeah, there's only four. Oh, okay. So this um, this call with the amazing actually creates a slideshow for me. That I can use as a presentation for my seller. So now we can complete the listing presentation. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? This is Gerald, brand new agent. So. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, so when I show up to the listing presentation, I show up on time, obviously. You'll notice that I dressed up, right? Do I usually wear jeans? Yeah. What am I wearing today? Black. Black. Oh, here, let's get that camera fixed on the actual. <laughs> it's just like a table. Oh, it's, it's not. Front camera. Okay. Okay. Let me get the camera right, guys. Hold on. Oh. We'll get it together, I swear. <laughs> Today's one of those days. It's the day. <laughs> it's a Monday. It's a Monday. Okay, so the camera has to be switched to the camera. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so now I've got the camera on. Let's turn the lights on. Although they, it's not following us. That's okay, I don't want it to follow oh, okay. okay, so you can see that I dressed up now. I wore slacks. This is important. Don't show up to your listing agent looking unprofessional or your listing appointment looking unprofessional. This is your first impression. I don't care if it's your mom and dad. This is your first impression as a professional to somebody who's looking to hire you to sell the most important piece of property they will ever own. They're going to make a lot of money. You're about to make a lot of money. 
The listing that I just sold is making me about, after take home, take home, $20,000. Should I show up looking like I earned $20,000 in paycheck? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Should I show up prepared like I do as well? Yes. Absolutely. That's why I bring all that, all those materials. Now, I didn't, the, the one that I bound, I gave to Luke, who's on this right now. Luke, I gave you my only example that I already have bound. And the color printer went that out. That's funny. The color printer went out. So I'm going to be honest with you. I was unprepared. Hey, I got it right here. If you want it, I'm coming in the office right now. Bring it. Um, bring it. Pass it around. Look, he's here he comes right now. We see him. Um, so I was unprepared. Not my client's problem. That's kind of, this kind of stuff will get me not. But I will tell you this. I've definitely shown up to a listing with just a piece of paper and it's staple. In fact, for the first six years of my business, this is all I did. This is all I did. I brought a piece of paper, staples. So if you think that you have to have binding to take a listing, don't do that to yourself. Just go. They're only going to meet with, like, they're only going to meet with one. Seventy-five percent of all people only meet with one agent. That's good to know. Okay. So, but you can get this bound. Most of the time, I have it bound, spiral bound. He's going to get it out and pass it around. You guys can see it. Color spiral bound. We'll have a little has a plastic cover on the front now. It looks all good. Okay, so I show up dressed professional to a listing appointment and I knock on the door and they answer the door. Here, come answer the door for me. We'll ask the whole thing out. Knock, knock, knock. Hi, Amy. Hi, thank you so much for having me over here. You look so cute. Oh, thank you. I dress up for you. <laughs> well, um, I brought all the materials. Did you have a chance to go over the materials that I gave you? I did not. Okay, that's okay. We'll go okay. over them together. Um, I, I, we can sit at the table right here, right? Is that good for you? Okay, good. Um, you sit here. Actually, I would love it if you would go ahead and take some time and look over this for me. It's got um, information about what it, this is. It's got my um credentials if you want to read about that what's a cma all of the pictures of all of the listings that we're comparing your property to and then in the back here is some of the most important pieces my marketing action plan as well as some education on pricing and timing of the market okay so okay. go ahead and scroll through that and i'm going to go around and look at the property through the eyes of a buyer okay all right um i've worked with a ton of buyers i help a lot of people buy and sell homes and so i'm going to be looking at this through their eyes and what they're going to do. It's a little more scrutiny than we're used to, but I just want you to, I want you to get the top dollar, okay? So I might give you some things, some homework to do to the house that's gonna make sure that you get the most money back. Is that okay with you? Yep. Okay, good. So I'm gonna go around and tour you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I go look around the house and I literally look at the house. I, get, I look at the ground and I look at the ceiling and I look at all the walls and I'm basically doing my agent visual inspection, but I'm looking at it from the eyes of would I buy this home right now and would I pay top dollar for it? And when you're looking at a house like that, through that mindset, you're looking for everything. And that's what buyers do. They look for everything that's wrong. Everything, everything good and bad or just bad? Um, I look for anything that's going to prevent you from making money. Now, if it's good, that's good. That's the way it should be. But anything that could prevent them from making some money, I'm going to point out. And I'm going to say, hey, here's something that, that I would fix that would probably net you more money in the end. It's going to get, if you, buyers are nitpicky, especially when they come through on an inspection. Buyers are, would love to give you all the money in the world when they want to get your house under contract. But then once they go into inspection, they want to pull back some of that money and they start nitpicking your property. So here's ways that you can get top dollar and not get nitpicked, right? Okay, so I've looked at the whole property and I come in and I say, all right, are you ready? did you have time to look at everything? Every last word. Oh, I love it. I love it. So you can do my job now. Yep. Okay, go. sounds good. So first things first, because um, <laughs> I'm unprepared. Uh, first things first, I actually did forget to bring a pen to a listing. It's my last listing appointment and I fell down the stairs and I still signed it. Good for you. <laughs> we, closed, we closed this week. We closed this week. Um, okay, good. So I, I brought a little presentation with me. I've got all kinds of information here for you, but um, first I'd like to start with, what do you want to do with your house here? Okay, great. So we're on board to selling it. Now, 
I have a question for you. Um, and this might seem counterintuitive because I'm a salesperson and I sell homes for a living, but do you want to keep it? Have you thought about um, keeping it on as a rental property, potentially getting pre-approved for your second home based off of this home being rented out? At Top Market Dollar, you don't have to be a landlord. I actually have a property management company that can run things for you. Um, have you th have you put any thought into that? Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. Because at the end of the day, yes, I can help you sell this property, and we would both make a lot of money. But I think that you would make more money of the over the life over your life if you kept this property, rented it out, um, let us manage it for you, and then and then you move on make some residual income, mm -hmm. keep the equity growing. It definitely helped me in my life have a, prop a rental property and I only have just one. Yeah. And it made me significantly wealthier. So I would like to do that for you. Have you thought about that? I have. Okay, and what do you think? Um, I have some background with property management. I don't really care for most tenants. Okay. So my mind goes to no. Your mind goes to no, okay. and. Do you think that you would be able to get pre-approved? Do you need the money? My, my biggest question is, do you need the money from the sale of this property in order for the down payment on your next? Yes. Okay, okay, great. So that's usually a significant reason why people do sell okay. and don't keep their property is because they need to use the proceeds from the sale in order to move on. Right. Um, otherwise, they can't afford it. I just didn't know if you were sitting on a pile of money back there Duh. in the back room, <laughs> the mattress money that you might want to pull out, and then we could go from there. Okay, yeah. great. So what I would suggest is that um, I know that you've been a property manager and you're, and you're like, I don't want to do that, but eventually in the future, it might be something that you think about having at an arm's length. You don't have to manage it, manage it anymore, but it is something that can be still great wealth. So as we work together, you'll learn that I'm like really big on helping my clients become wealthy and I'm really big on making them money. Everything that I do to help you in any capacity is to help you make more money. Does that sound like a good kind of friendship? Yes. Okay, good. I like to think so too and that's where I come from as a fiduciary. So, um, okay, so we want to sell the house. Do you know how much you want to sell it for? No. One million. Well, of course we want to sell it for one million. <laughs> I'm writing it down just so that I have a note here that you're a little unrealistic. I'm just <laughs> so, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so, so really, I know you've looked at Zillow. I know you know what's going on in the market. Um, it's everywhere. So, what, what's the ballpark here? I don't know. I it's a mobile home. Okay. But it sits on just under an acre. Okay. So I think at most we'd be selling it for the land. I don't think the house is worth that much. Hmm. Okay. Is it affixed to a permanent foundation? Yes. Okay. Was it built after 1974? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think your property probably has more value in it than you think it does. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about that today. Okay. So, um, okay. So, I like you as a seller because you're not going to hit beat me up on the price. Why? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well um, the reason I say that is that you, I. I, the values that I'm going to give you today might actually shock you because of the size of the property and where it's located, the size of the property itself, the house. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's probably going to shock you if you haven't already looked at it. Um, my other question is, where are you going? Um, I don't know yet. Okay. You live in this property though, right? Yes. Okay. So you don't know where you're going. You mean like where are you going to move to? Where are you going to move to? Another house. Okay, where's that house? <laughs> no, this is legitimately how it goes down. I was not prepared. No, this is exactly how it goes. They're not prepared either. They've never sold a house. They don't know. Yeah, somewhere with a pool. Okay, you want to move. Okay, do you have another house? No. Okay, so you want to buy another house. So we're going to sell this, and then we're going to buy another property. Are you buying it here in California? Yes. Okay, great. So we need to get you pre-approved. That's actually going to be one of the first things that we want to do. Um, the reason being is that we need to make sure that you're capable of buying a home before we do anything to this house. I don't want you spending a bunch of money to get this home ready for the market, and then it turns out that you're six months off from being pre-approved for a mortgage. Now, I'm not, I don't know anything about your financial situation, so I'm not sure if that's how it will be, but that's just what I've experienced in the past. So to avoid you having the heartbreak and disappointment, we just get you pre-approved up front. Um, okay. And 
uh, we can be pre-approved. We have an in-house lender in the office that I can have reach out to you and they can start that process. Okay. We can usually get that done within a week. It just depends on how quickly you can get us the income documents that we need. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions about that? No. Okay. Okay, so we need to sell and we need to buy. And is there a certain amount you need to net off of this Prop property? Do you know that? I do not know that. Okay. So why are we selling? Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want a bigger house. You want a bigger house. Okay. How much bigger? Mm, space for an office and a built-in pool. Okay. And like a mudroom for my dog. Okay. I'm writing on it. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this house that we have currently, and it's 2634 square feet. It's on. Um, I know. <laughs> I just said. <laughs> well, if it's on a permanent foundation, I'm going to tell you this isn't a mobile home. I know that you think it's a mobile home. This is technically a modular home, it's a manufactured home. So it's not a stick build. But it is a permanent home. It's on a permanent foundation. It's on land, and it's a pretty big property. And this isn't going to go anywhere. Nobody's going to be able to move it. So people have referred to this as a mobile home, but I'm telling you that it's not. So it does have much more value than you think it's going to. Okay. Um, which is good for you. So it's 2634 square feet, five bedroom, three bath. Am I hitting it on the nose? Mm -hmm. Built in '91. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and who put this home together? Did I saw that you were like the second owner who owned it before you? My mom. That's awesome. Okay, so it's a family home. Yes. Lots of memories here? Yes. Awesome. Okay, and so how do you feel about moving? Sad, but ready. Okay, what makes you ready? Um, I've been here all my life. Mm hmm. Ready for something new. Why does new excite you? I like you too. <laughs> Why do you think I'm asking what all these I questions? What should I say? <laughs> you don't want to make a mistake by either selling her home and then her completely regretting that she sold a home. That she, right? Like, for instance, her example, this is my family home. Yeah, this is my family home. I'm looking for something bigger. Um, I'm looking for like why does she have to move? Because right. right now it kind of just sounds like she, she wants, wants to move. move. And are we in a tough market? Absolutely. Right. Depends on which. Yeah, we're in a tough market for buyers. So if somebody just wants to move because they like shiny new things, well, that could work, but it also could not work. So I want to dig a little bit deeper with her and find out like what is it about this house that isn't working for her. So that way, when it gets a little bit tough, I can pinch on that and say, hey, remember, this is the house that was causing you pain. Remember this pain? Remember this pain? And then she'll be like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's why I was doing this. So it kind of works for all of us. Pain versus pleasure. Okay, so you want a new house, and you said you wanted a bigger house. You wanted a mudroom for the dog. Mm -hmm. More land? Um, yeah. How much more land? Um, two acres. Okay. Okay, so mudroom, more land. You said you want an office space. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so this is the family home. How long has it been the family home? Mm -hmm. Since it was built? Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's been in the family since 91. Are you sure you don't want to keep it? Pretty sure. I mean, it's a lot of work. I don't want to do the work. Okay, got it. So there's been some deferred maintenance on the property? Yes. All right. Okay. 
tell me more about that. Um, my stepdad did a lot of the work, but he didn't do it great. Okay. He did it half back. Okay. And it just would just take too much time for me to do it all myself. Okay, got it. So some of the work was done. It wasn't up to the standard that you wanted to be done on a home that you're going to continue to live in. Right. Have you looked into getting it all fixed? I have semi-priced it out with people that I would use. Uh -huh. And it's just not something I'm going to do. And the market's so high that I just need to you know, not get. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, great. So how would you um, rate this home on a scale of one being like a complete remodel and then two being... Or, I mean, and a 10 being like completely perfect brand new home. Probably right in the middle. Okay, so you think this is a five? Yeah. Okay, great. So it's livable, it's just not Absolutely. what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Everything works that you know of? Mm -hmm. Okay, everything's operable. Any defects in the house at all? No. Have you guys done any repairs in the last year? What do you mean by defect? I mean, like things that aren't working, things that are broken, things that people need to know about, or things that you might need to fix in order to sell the property. No. Okay. Um, and have you gotten any work done on the property in the last 12 months? No. Okay. okay. When was the last time that the home's been had work done to it? Such as? Like um, Jenny, any, or anything, any updates, right. any flooring? Paint, anything. We completely painted it in October. Okay. Ourselves though. Okay, that's okay. You're allowed to do work to your property. And new siding was put on the back of the house, and we have the siding to the front of the house, but that has not been completed yet. Okay, the in front of the house is there drywall? Is that why you guys want to do new siding? No. It's just old. Oh, okay. New siding. I would suggest doing that. You'll get more money for it. Okay, so new signings were back in front. Notice how I asked her the same question three times and she said no to the first two and then she finally came out with it. <laughs> That's very real. But they need to disclose this kind of stuff, right? Like they have to disclose that they painted in October. They have to disclose the new, the new sighting and that they did this work. They don't have to disclose that the stepdad did all the work for the last 12 years or anything like that. But in the last 12 months, they need to disclose what's been done as long as they've owned the property. Really, it's as long as they've owned the property, but it's really the last 12 months. You don't need to go back 10 years. We painted 10 years ago. <laughs> Unless it was a complete remodel, and then, yeah, we remodeled the whole place 10 years ago. Sometimes that's a good thing to say. Okay, good. So, um, so tell me a little bit about um, your experience with buying and selling homes. Um, the process is long. <laughs> the process <laughs> is long. Okay. What else? Having people in my house that I don't know. Okay, people in your house that you don't know. What else? That's it. Okay. Are those two things that keep you up at night when you think yeah. about selling your home? Okay. Is there anything that does keep you up at night when you think about selling it? Um, just not knowing when I would need to move out. Okay. Okay, so like how long can this process take? Right. When do I have to move out? Okay. Have you looked online and seen any of the properties that are available that you do like? Yes. Okay, do you have a specific property that you like? No. No? Okay, tell me about the ones that you do like. What's been your favorite so far? Um, what do they look like? <clears throat> they have a built-in pool. Okay. And most of them are in citrus light. Okay. Citrus light. Okay, so this home um, is not in citrus light. So what is it about citrus lights that you like? I just like the way the house is right there. Okay. Do you like the neighborhood? Are you familiar with the area? Yes. Okay. Any family over there? No. Oh. Okay. I don't have family in my neighborhood. Oh, okay. Got it. That makes sense. Um, 
Okay, so citrus type, you like having a pool. Have you looked at the pricing over there at all? Are you are you comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I really don't know until I talk to someone here. True, but you do kind of know. Um, what do you think you would feel comfortable with in a mortgage payment? Probably under four. Under four hundred thousand? Or under four thousand dollars a month? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I'm just living large. <laughs> no, yeah. That's not actually. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so anything under four hundred thousand is going to be fine for you. Awesome. Um, tell me about who's moving into the home with you. Um, me, my husband, and my two sons. Okay. What are they looking for in a home? Do you know? No. I mean, really, they would be here with me, right? Your husband would be here with you, but just <laughs> pretend for me a little bit. Okay. okay. <laughs> so my husband wants a shop. Okay. And a garage. Okay, a shop and a garage. How big are we talking? Two-car garage. Okay. Okay, cool. So we're looking for two acres, a shop and a garage. Um, anything for the boys? Just a bedroom each. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. If they're, if they're lucky. How old are your sons? 19 and 15. I like that you had to think about that for a while. Did you count the years up? Yes. Did you count the wrinkles? And they're both getting ready to have a birthday, so that's why I had to figure it out. Oh, okay. Got it. That's awesome. They're both born around the same time? Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. Okay, so we want a shop in our garage, maybe a couple bedrooms for the kids if they ask, right? Maybe. <laughs> Anything for you? Anything? Specific in your home that you need, other than the mud room and the office space and the more land, anything that you're looking for. I mean, your budget based off of the price of the property, so what we're going to be able to sell the property for, and what you're able to pay in a monthly budget, you're going to kind of get to pick where you want to live. Um, and so, I don't need like a pasta arm in my kitchen or anything like that. Right. But just a kitchen big enough for at least four people to stand in and not be crowded. Okay. And then just the office space and then for my four dogs because I'm psycho. Okay, there we go. Four dogs. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't have seen them coming into the house, but they okay. Have a <laughs> okay, so we've got three boys, you, four dogs. No wonder you need more space. This makes, this makes total sense. I'm not judging. I'm like, I'm wondering how you fit in this house right now just because it seems a little bit, it, it seems like a large house, but when you really get down to brass tacks, this is not that big of a house with all those people yeah. um, because dogs are genuinely people and I'm sure they have their own kennels that take up space and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So I think I'm starting to get on the same page with you here because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a little worried because when I talk to sellers and they're not too sure about where they want to go and they're not too sure about what they want to do, um, usually it's because they're going to test the market and see where they're at. And it, like it's a great it's a great market for sellers right now. Um, but have you heard about the market for buyers? Because if it's a great market for sellers, what is it not for buyers? Not great. Not not great. So and the reason that they say it's not great is that you really have to put your best foot forward every time you put an offer on the property. So people are bending over backwards to give sellers what they want. That's great for you. Okay. It's a good time now. Why do you think it would be, why do you think people would be buying in this market? If there's money to speak to borrow. Very smart. You've obviously done some sort of <laughs> research on this before. What does money they say? That. Okay. Or it could be a variation of things. That's why I ask a lot of questions because I don't like to assume that my seller is a, is needs me to educate them. In fact, it's, it's really silly to assume that. I like to ask, that's why I asked her, what's your experience with real estate before because if they um if they don't have any experience then i might have to explain things a little bit deeper but if they have experience 
then I don't want to because then I'm going to patronize them or I'm going to be explaining too much, right? So, okay, all right, so I can kind of see where you're going. Oh, what I was going to say is money is super cheap, and that's why buyers are running because what you can afford right now is going to be the cheapest that you can afford it coming in the next year or so. Interest rates are going up, um, so it's a really good time that you jumped on this. You can still get the most, in fact, you can get the most amount of money you're going to get for your house at this point in time. Um, and the house that you want is, um, is available for you. We just have to make sure that we put you in a prime position to be ready to get it when it comes on the market. Um, so that's why we want to get you pre-approved now. That doesn't mean we're going to go out and start looking at homes right away. What that's going to do is it's going to let you know exactly how much, what's your max budget, um, and then how much is your payment going to be. And based off of the sale of this property, how much from the sale of this property are you going to have to use to put down on the next? Because wouldn't it be nice to keep some money in your pocket? Maybe buy some new furniture to fill this new big ass house you're about to buy? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, that's real. I am very real with people. Like I talk like people talk. I don't change the way that I talk. Most of the time, there we like get on the level. Anyway, um, okay. So let's talk about the comp that we did. You look at the comps for the properties that we saw on here. Okay, good. Um, so looking at the comps based on the square footage of your house, um, where would you think we would price the property? Well, of um, all of these homes are the same parcel. So the parcels around the same amount. You can see that what I did is I pulled comps based off of how an appraiser is going to pull comps. So I use bedrooms, bathrooms, and then I use a variation on the square footage, about 150 square feet on either side. So if your home is 3,000 square feet, I look for homes that are 2850 and I look for homes that are 3150. And in between that, every so in between that, that I should look where my house was. I'm asking you based off of all of these comparables that you're looking at right here um, on their sales prices 788, 733, 688, 840, 620, 770, 760. And I'm giving you my idea based off of you not seeing the property. Uh, well, you said that you looked through this and looked through every picture, so. <laughs> is that what so do you want to go over these in a little more in depth now? Sure. Okay, no problem. We can do that. That's not a problem at all. So let's take a look at some of these properties. We've got all of them, except for one, are four, we've got a four bedroom, two bath. All of them are five bedroom, three bath, right? All of them are in the Cameron Park area. All of them are on the same size of a lot as yours. All of them are around the same kind of square footage. Okay. So we know that these properties are a match. Now we just have to look at the properties um, and their pictures to see if they match your property. And then we base and then we base the pricing off of that. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to kind of breeze through here. So here's the first one that we're going to look at. This is 3370 Granite Court. It closed at 788,000. Here, let me turn off the camera. The camera and the light. <laughs> Why are you turning too off? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Normally I have like a laptop right here, but I wanted you guys to kind of hear what these pictures look like. Normally it's just a laptop and I kind of go through the pictures with them. And I say, so looking at this property, how do you think it compares to your property? Mm, it looks a lot more updated. Okay, so it looks a lot more updated. I do see that as well. Kitchen looks custom, mm -hmm. right? I think these are all the rest of the pictures. Here, I just want to show you the backyard. What do you think about the backyard compared to yours? It's a lot smaller. Okay, a lot smaller, right? The house has a little bit of a bigger footprint. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we get the picture with this house, right? Yeah. 
So if you put your house on a scale of one to ten and you rated yours a five, what would you rate this house? A ten. Okay, you would rate this a ten. Okay, yeah. great. So let's take a look at this house. This was seven sixty twenty Connery Drive. This actually sold for fifty thousand dollars less. So let's take a look at these pictures. Based on curb appeal, what do you think about this house? Yeah. Okay. What do you think about the lot size compared to yours? See, I'm asking lots of questions. Am I telling her what I think? No. My opinion, it will. It will, but not until I have hers. And her, people are smart. They see pictures, you have to show them. If you tell them, if I was like, well, your house doesn't compare to that house. What does that say to them? Do people, do, that's their house. What am I saying to them? I don't your see house. value in my house. I don't see value. Maybe I don't see value in them. Like people take it personally. Yeah. They really do. So I don't give opinions. I just ask questions. All right, so what do you think about the backyard on this? It's nice. Yeah, it's big. It looks a little, looks a little, needs some work. What about the inside of this home? What about compared to the last one? Yeah. Do you think that, um, how do you think this one rates? Okay, so a little bit higher, but but kind of comparable to yours. Yeah. Think of the mobile home in the beginning was a bad choice. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this one. So this one's on a little bit of a smaller lot in a subdivision. Okay, you gotta tell me what kind of houses you're doing to compare next time. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're just getting an idea of what, what we do. Okay, so what do you think about this property? That was so much objective than the last one. Right? Does that look a lot like the same? Let's take a look at the backyard just so that we can get an idea of what we're working with here. That one looks like it has a view. It has a view and it's a sloped lot. So it is the same size, but it's the lot is oh, not the lot is not usable, right? The lot's not as usable. So this property sold for 688. See what that unusable land can do for your sale price. Okay, so I brought this on because I didn't know what you were gonna, I didn't know what I was walking into here. And a lot of times my sellers um, will pick a property that's sold near them that's comparable in size, um, but it's quite a bit different and it's sold for much, much more. So I brought this comparable on just because it sold for the most amount of money in your neighborhood. And I wanted you to see it um, directly. So we're gonna take a look at it. So this one's pretty done up. It's got the in-ground pool. What do you think about this property? It's definitely upgrading. Absolutely. So we can agree that this is like yes, up there. Okay, you can great. See why it sold for so much. Yeah, you can see what, right? Compared to everything else. Okay, so here's a here's a great property that I want us to consider as a comparable for your property. Okay. And you can let me know if you think I'm way off. Um, but what do you think about the curb appeal from the very beginning? It's all right. Okay. Uh, compared to your property? Probably about the same. Okay. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do you think about the interior? It's all right. Okay. Compared to yours? Looks a little bit better. 
Oh, it's better than yours? I don't know. Actually, what's wrong with the wall? I think it's wallpaper. <laughs> it looks like it's faux. So what does that mean? Faux painting, it's where the, it's like got the texture. It's like a sponge. It's like a sponge. It's like a sponge. in there for a <laughs> <red color. laughs> Yeah, they turn out for a picture. Okay. So I've got. Let's look at this property real quick. What do you think about this um, piece of land? Looks like a pretty comparable size, right? What about the interior? Yeah. Okay. So this property sold for seven sixty. So the average um, sold price out of all seven was seven hundred forty-two thousand, and the average days on market market was nine days on market. Oh, sure. Yeah, so your home could potentially sell rather quickly if we price it right and we put it on the market properly. Okay. Um, you can see here that based on list price versus sales price, does anything stand out to you about that? You're going to get offered by bid. I mean, a higher amount than what you list it for. Yeah, so you can see that most of the homes that listed lower sold for a higher amount, right? And they sold in less days. There's actually a trick to this. I do it with all of my properties. I know that you're concerned about when you're going to move. That was one of your bigger concerns is when are you going to have to move out? We can actually time that. The beauty of using a system like mine, where like a lot of other realtors are using, is that if we price the property accurately, I can tell you exactly how long it's going to take to sell. If we price the property too high, then it's up in the air because we're going to have to find the perfect buyer to come in and pay the exorbitant price that, that we want to put on the property. So I usually recommend to price the property low. Um, in fact, you can't underprice a property. You can put a home on the market for a dollar, and the biggest problem that you're going to have is you're going to have like thousands of offers. And the last, the problem you're not going to have is that it's going to reach market value. Can I turn you going? Why? Because there's going to be people out there that are going to look at your home and they're going to say, oh my gosh, a dollar? I'm going to bid a dollar on that. And there's a slim chance that that's actually going to work. And then there's people out there that actually want to buy the house. And they're going to look at the comps. They're going to work with a knowledgeable agent who's going to tell them this home is worth this amount. If you're going to win this bidding process, you're going to have to get to this amount. And there's people that will reach that amount, right? Now, what I like to do is I like to price the property um, right under the $100,000 mark. And I know that that sounds scary to some, but I believe this home could potentially sell um, over $700,000. But it will not if we price it over $700,000. So I think the proper pricing for this property would be around 699,000 following suit with a few of our predecessors here. And you can see that they're actually the ones that wound up getting the most amount of money out of every sale and they sold in the least amount of days. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So when I look at a marketing strategy for this property to make sure that we get you um, the most amount of money possible, I think mine would work out perfectly because we priced it at six ninety nine. Um, putting your home on the market on a specific day is strategic as well. I like to put my homes on the market on a Wednesday, and here's why. I work with buyers as well, and I know that most agents are putting their homes on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And what that does is it gives buyers who are at work and have lives time to fall in love with your home before the weekend. So you put it on the market on a Wednesday or a Thursday, and they get a notification. New home available. They look at the home and we provide with my services professional photos and a video detailing the inside of the property as well. They watch the video, they look at the photos, they fall in love. They call the realtor. They say, we got to see this property. And instead of making them rush out to view the property that evening when most of them have soccer practice, everything else, we let them come to the open houses over the weekend. Now, you also said that you don't like to have a lot of people in your home that you don't know, and I completely understand that. 
So instead of making you pack all your stuff up and be gone every day of the week, I can have open house, I can have showings only at the open houses. So we'll throw two open houses, Saturday and Sunday. We can throw them at whatever times you like. I usually like them to be for at least three to four hours. That will give everyone a chance to come and see the property. Any showings outside of that would be on an as needed basis and only at your approval. I like to direct everyone to the open houses so that you don't have to deal with leaving. Um, other suggestions that we've made to sellers, if they're okay, they can leave for the entire weekend and we can leave the home available to show to realtor agents with, or buyers with realtors only. They can use the lockbox that I put on the property. Um, and that will get you the most amount of exposure. And then Monday, uh, offers are due Monday at 5 p.m. They're not, they're viewed at 5 p.m. on Monday, they're due at 5 p.m. on Monday. Realtors are known to be late, they're known to be stragglers, and buyers are fickle. So I don't like to put hard deadlines around us. I only like to put hard deadlines around them. So on Monday at 5 p.m., that's when all of the offers are due. I can guarantee I'm going to receive another offer at 7 p.m. or the next morning. It happens to me every time. So 5 p.m. is my deadline. I usually receive most of the offers then. That's when I start to vet them. So the last listing that I used this strategy on, I think we received seven offers. I went back to each offer and I vetted them with their lender and the agent. And then I asked them, I let them know we have seven offers. Pricing is high at this point. I actually tell them where we're at. And then I asked them if they would like to bring their buyer up to that pricing. If we have a buyer at $6.99 and a buyer at $7.50, I need to let the $6.99 know that we have a buyer at $7.50 in case they want to change their mind and come up and compete. And um, you would think that people would just put their best foot forward, but they don't always. Sometimes they just offer you an introductory offer. Um, so I go back to everybody and I let them know that you've got offers in place and that we would like them to come up. Believe it or not, there are people that come up and they start to get into the competition. And usually a few will fall behind. We want them to, because those people were never actually tied into the property to begin with. They were just throwing their hat in the ring. Does that make sense? We don't want people to throw their hat in the ring. We want folks, people that are committed to you, committed to buying your home, especially when you have to move into another property or go out and look for another property. So, um, so the buyers, um, I go back to them. I let them know that we have a higher contract. I try to get them up. We're usually going to end with about three or four, or on that one, we ended with about three or four that were arguing over it. And at the very last minute, because we were smart and we didn't prevent people from continuing to put in offers, I have an all cash offer come in that beat everybody and removed contingencies. So the reason that I play this long game of having the home sit on the market for a little while, um, also making sure that we're not reviewing offers right away is to your benefit because there's going to be someone that comes along and says, oh, I'll beat everybody. And if we've already responded to everybody Monday night right after the offers were due, do we have time to collect that final offer that could potentially net you even more money? Does that make sense? Yeah. So the system that I put together is based off of experience and success. Um, you can see here that some of these homes were getting 112% lowest price, 105%, 110%. On average, the MLS agents, the MLS as a whole is getting their sellers 100% lowest price. That means that if you put your home on the market for 300,000, you're getting 300,000. If you work with any agent in the MLS, if you work with me specifically, I average 108% lowest price for my sellers. So I'm basically paying for my own services as well as netting you another 2% on top of what anybody else in the MLS can do. Based on this program that I've just marketing program that I put together. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Would you like to see any of the marketing that I do? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh my gosh. All these comps. Okay. So let's talk about the first things. First things first, um, in order to get all of this marketing started, we would approve the paperwork. I have it here with me. And then we're going to price it properly. I think we're on the same page with the pricing, correct? Yeah. So you're totally okay with us pricing that around $6.99? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, so we're going to price it right around there. And then I'm going to have a professional photographer come out 
and take photos. If you don't mind, oops, I think it's back over here. Dang it! When I have my laptop up, it's so good. I don't have it available. Okay, so I would love to show you some one of my previous listings. And the marketing that we were able to provide for this seller. So right away, can you see anything about our photos that are a little bit different from what you were seeing? Did you show me the top of the photo? No. We take photos at the highest times of one of the best lighting times of the day. What time is that? Usually around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Okay. It is. It's one of the best times for lighting for houses because okay. the light's not going to be directly above the house. It's going to be shining through the windows. It can also depend on which which way the home is facing. So me and my photographer work on that together. Perfect. So you can see that we're like strategic in every way. Like even the time of day that we take photos. Is that a daylight saving time or is that like winter or spring or? My photographer determines it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't try to go that deep with it, but he'll, he'll let me know. <laughs> he'll ask me, he'll, he gets the address. He looks up what time, what way it's facing and what time. And then he tells me. I'm going to be there at this time, make sure they're available, but it's usually around two o'clock in the afternoon. I did have another question. When you first started um, the little um, like prompt that you were doing with her, you mentioned something about uh, her getting a rep, instead of selling it, turning it into a rental property mm -hmm. where she would be able to not manage it, mm -hmm. and you said we. So with you saying we, the, our, the brokerage has a property management, or sorry, John Bernardo has a property management company that you can refer them to. I was wondering that. Okay, that's totally fine. If you there's a referral fee. And there's a five hundred dollar referral fee if you refer a new landlord to the property management. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's okay. the name of it? Bold Properties. Bold, Bold Pro Properties, right? Bold Property Management. Bold Property Management. B O L D. I used to run from them, but crap. Okay, so we take professional photos throughout the entire property. And we don't just take a few photos, we take a lot of photos. We arrange them in a way that makes sense to touring the property. People buy properties online first, and if we mess it up online for the first in first impression, then they're not gonna come take a look at the property. It's gonna be very important. So I like to picture everything so that they get a full scope of all the bedrooms, all the hallways, Everything that's available. Beautiful. Okay, so not only do we do professional photos, but we also create a marketing video. Does your photographer do this as well? Yes, he does. Uh, I don't think the volume's up. So first things first, we plan listing, we set up a time and you guys are ready to have this done. Okay. When you're ready to have this done, I'll have Patrick come over and he'll take um, all the photos and the video and everything. I can even help you stage the property if you want. You don't have to pay for staging, but we can just use your furniture to stage it. That's what I did with these sellers. We kind of just moved everything out and then I helped them put pieces in there so it looked very minimal, but still you can understand what the room is for. Um, and then we are going to get it prepped to put it on the market. I have a lockbox installed. It's just easier access for me, for inspectors, as well as whoever's in contract with us, as well as agents to show the property. Um, we will enter it into the MLS on Wednesday or Thursday, depending upon when we get the pictures. 
that's going to syndicate that out to thousands of websites. It's going to be everywhere that it needs to be for everyone to be able to see it. Um, and then we will hold the open houses over the weekend. We should be in contract by the following Wednesday. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, your other concern was finding another property and then move out date. So we can make the sale of this property contingent upon you finding a replacement home. That means once you get into contract, you have up to a certain amount of time to get into contract on the next property. Um, so that's why we need to get you pre-approved. The other thing that we're going to do, not only make it contingent, so that way if you don't find your property, you can back out of the sale. We're also going to get you a rent back, meaning that we're going to be able to, you're going to be able to stay in the property after close of escrow up to 60 days in order to either close on the next property or maybe even find the next property. Does that kind of relieve some of the tension around that yeah. subject matter? Okay, great. Any questions about anything before we fill out the paperwork? No. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll approve the paperwork. So then I just go through the listing agreement with them and um, and I go through it pretty plainly. I tell them about the AD. Um, my responsibilities as their listing agent is to be their fiduciary. Their responsibility is to disclose all the information that they know that's material and affecting the property. Buyer's responsibilities is to get the property inspected. And the seller and the buyer have responsibilities to each other to work in a diligent time frame and all that. And then I have them sign the bottom, right? And then we sign. And then I go through fair housing and I say, we can't discriminate against anybody for any reason. I'm going to help you navigate that. If you have any questions about fair housing laws or discrimination, I'm well versed. I can help you. But basically, we can't discriminate against anybody buying the property. The only thing that we look at is whether or not they're financially able to purchase the property or not. And that's it. Um, this is a possible representation of more than one buyer or seller. So I can represent more buyers. I can represent multiple sellers. I could represent the seller and the buyer on one property, which can actually be really, really easy because it's not the same as a defendant and a plaintiff in a court case. You're looking for two different outcomes. We're all looking for the same outcome. We want to sell the property and we want to get it done in a timely manner. Um, so that's uh, that. Offers are not confidential. That's why I'm able to tell people, hey, we've got seven offers. We're up to 760. We're going to need you to come up. That's exactly what I did for these sellers. I think we've gotten offers up to 750,000 and we were kind of hovering right around there. And then um, I went back to everybody and I said, we've got them. And then they just started inching up 60, 760, 765, 775. And then finally we had a cash guy come in. We let him view the property after the open house. He came in at 780, removed contingencies, and we were good to go. Right. So it can really work out in your benefit for offers not being confidential. Um, wire transfer fraud, nobody is going to ask you to wire anything. You're selling your home. The only thing you're going to be doing is collecting money. Okay, so now we're going to go through the paperwork. Um, my listings last for one year. It's not going to take me a year to sell your home. It's just that things happen. What if it takes a little bit longer for you to get ready? What if it takes us, what if you put it on hold for a little bit? This gives you up to a year to sell your property with me. We're going to put it on the market for $6.99. I'm going to write that in there here. I do charge 6%. That's paid to me. I split that with the buyer's agent. So I'm going to offer the buyer's agent 2.5% on the MLS for them if they bring the buyer. And I'm going to have you initial at the bottom here. And then you just kind of go through it and initial. All right? Any questions? Any questions from you guys? No, no, you can go to the bathroom. So okay. in relation to when they market it and the, the date of your listing appointment, how do you uh, state that? It depends on when they're ready. So they have to tell me when they're going to be ready. Most of the time they have stuff that they want to do to the property. Um, so I let them know, hey, you, you just call me when you're ready. From the time it takes me to get pictures, if I get pictures on Monday, I can have it on the market by Wednesday. I'm skipping here for that. So if they called me on a Sunday and said, we're ready for pictures tomorrow, I would say, that's cute. Uh, we're going to get pictures done later this week when the photographer's ready. So I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I would probably say that. I'd be like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, we're booked up. <laughs> no, we're going to have to come out later this week. Um, but yeah, so it usually, I usually tell them it's going to take me a week to get it on, online. So if they tell me that they are ready for pictures, it's going to take me a week to get pictures done and get it on the market. And I like to have it on the market on a Wednesday. 
And I'm out about about that. And I've had sellers be like, well, can't we do it on a Tuesday? No, Tuesday's too long. Wednesday's just right. Thursday's almost too short. And that's, that's the way that I work at. And I'm very serious about that. And so if we come up to, we're ready and it's a Tuesday. Okay, we're going to get pictures this week. We're going to have it on next Wednesday. So if we call Sunday, you could have it on the market by Wednesday? No, because I got to get the, on the photographer's schedule. So you have to do it the next Wednesday. You have to do it the next Wednesday. So when you do your walkthrough and you do Betty while she's glancing over things, mm -hmm. when do you talk to her about what you think is like what you I don't talk about any of that until they sign a listing agreement with me. I don't give out my expertise for free. Okay. Um, so then like still in that appointment, like after your um possibly service. after. Okay. Yeah. And then do you tell them what you think? Without like rubbing them the wrong way, what you think they should do before? Like, absolutely, absolutely. They need to fix some shape. I ask them what their level of capacity. What do you want? What are you thinking you want to do? And can I give you some suggestions? Okay. What and was then that I first question you had? I, I missed that first question. What was your first question? Oh, do I give my opinion on yeah. what they need to change before photography? Yeah. Yeah, I'll let them. Yeah, if they want me to help them stage it, I will. Oh, okay. Yeah, if they want me to give them opinions, like, I'll tell people, oh, I see that you have a green bedroom. But you won't um, talk to them about that until you get the list. I don't talk to them about that until they sign. I'm not their fiduciary, and I don't owe, owe, owe them any expertise until, I just gave them a ton of expertise for free. Yeah. <laughs> you could go through and tell somebody to do everything that they should do. They'll go through and do it all, and then hire their cousin to sell the house. People will leave you too, so you gotta make sure you don't get yeah. stuck in that situation. So on that, I'm sure everyone's seen this when pictures get posted and a house like looks like quarters live there, mm -hmm. and there's poorly taken. I mean, obviously that's not you, but like, what would you do in that situation if you came to a listing agreement and their house is just like? We have to drop the price down significantly because people will not be able to look past all of this. In order to see the value, or they need to get it out, right? Or they need to get it out. But I've had people that are unwilling to get it out. My Riley's dad, I sold his parents, my kid's dad, I sold his parents' house, and they refused to do anything that I said. And they and we wound up having to do a significant price reduction in order to get it sold. Not my problem. <laughs> like I, at the end of the day, if you're if you're not going to listen to the professional, then we just have to drop the price down to a price that's going to be comfortable for people to look past your mess. I feel like a lot of people shop with their eyes and mm -hmm. when they're looking at pictures online, that's the first thing that they see. Like they're not gonna look at the actual house. They're gonna look at all the clutter, they're gonna mm -hmm. look at things that are I got my house that I own right now for under ten ten thousand under what it's currently valued at. I got all of my closing costs paid for, which was thirteen thousand dollars. And I got them to do $5,000 worth of sewer line work and $4,000 worth of press work because the pictures online were trash. They were cell phone pictures. <laughs> he cost his seller tens of thousands of dollars because he was being cheap and lazy. And that's it. That's, that's the bank of it. Would you like the only offer? I was the only offer and they'd been on the market for 34 days and they'd already um, had to do a price reduction. Now I bought that property and I gave them 450, but they were priced at 435. But I was being generous because I knew what was I knew what it was. Um, but it appraised for 460, so I got over on the seller for I got I got over on that seller for ten thousand dollars plus thirteen thousand dollars in closing costs plus another nine thousand dollars in repairs. If they would have priced that property at 399, and they would have put professional photos on. It would have, that seller would have gotten probably over 460, 475, 480, because that's what they're selling for now. So, like, it's important that you do right by the seller and make sure that you get good marketing. But if they're not going to listen to you, I mean, there's nothing you can do. When it comes to scheduling best inspections before you market, how would that play into your scheduling? Um, that needs to happen right away. Because we have to get the pest inspection done, and then they're going to have to get the work completed, and that usually takes about two weeks. 
but it also depends on the property and how much, if it has to be tented, then we're looking at another month. If there's a lot of, let's say the garage is packed out. Mm -hmm. Can you wait to get the best inspection until they move the stuff? Because they're going to just label it like we couldn't inspect that room. Um, that depends on what the seller wants to do. you got to ask them. But my suggestion would be to get it out. But if they don't have anywhere to put it, what are they going to do? I tell them to get it away from the walls at least. But like, you know, they got a, a bench with all kinds of tools attached to it. They're not doing that. They're not going to do it. So you're going to have sellers that are like, yes, I'm willing to do what you tell me to do. And then you're going to have sellers that are like, people can figure it out. <laughs> and the people that can figure it out, those are the people that get less money. But they get, I still get them the most amount of money that they could possibly get <laughs> for the house. Right. right, because I still use my strategy. I still negotiate the way that I do. I still get them more than they would get with anybody else. They're just shooting themselves in the foot by not doing what they need to do to get the most, which is empty your house out. But the homes that sell for the most are vacant. They're vacant. So if you if you can't move out of the house, you're still going to lose money. Just by living in it, you lose money. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How drastically does that presentation change based on their personality? A lot. Okay. A lot. So was that geared towards someone who wants to see charts and diagrams and all that? Um, that was because you weren't giving me much. Well, she couldn't read your personality. <laughs> I have no personality. <laughs> no, that was just that was basic. This was like a basic. Um, this was a basic conversation. Okay. It was pretty standard. So does that change is my question based on their personality. Yeah, because somebody that has um or do you do that every single time? Nope, I don't do the same thing every single time. It's gonna be different every single time based off of what we talk about. Like for instance, the last the last walkthrough to like bring an owner onto the property management company, he was like a statistics guy. He yeah, had, like statistics for like all this stuff, and I was like, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so if it's a guy like that, then we talk about that. But I know the statistics ahead of time. Yeah. So like I know that how I knew I I reviewed this information. I know that he didn't, but I do. So I look at all of the properties. I know what he's going to talk about. He's the reason I put the eight hundred and thirty thousand dollar property on there. That would be a C type because they'd be like, well, there's this property that sold for eight hundred and thirty thousand and although C types love statistics and they love details, they don't always know the details and they don't always know what they're talking about just because they but they may want to hear it. They want to hear it and they want to address it because they've looked at that call and they pulled it, but do they actually understand all the details that go into the sale of a property? No, they don't. So they haven't considered all the factors. So if you have a C type, you can't tell them they're wrong, but you have to say um, let's take a look at this comp together and let's compare it to your property. And that's important why you ask a lot of questions. Because if I would have said, well, look at this property, I mean, it's obviously much better than yours. What does that say? It's the truth, but is that what they want to hear? <laughs> is that going to get him to understand? No, it's going to put him on alert. So the most important thing is to just ask questions. Like, what do you think of this property? How does this property rate to you? I love the scale of one to 10. On a scale of one to 10, meaning a property is a total fixer, gotta redo the whole thing, and, on a, and a 10 is like perfect, brand new home. Where does your property fit? Get them to rate it. Then when they rate it, say, okay, great. And it's not right or it's not wrong. It gives you an idea of where they're at. And then when you go through the comms, say, all right, rate this property. And then they're gonna think back to, oh, well, mine's a five. So what do you do for high D's or like you have a half hour? High D's, let's say I have a half an hour, then I ask them what they want to do. It's it's what what do you want to do? That's the most important question that you're gonna ask. Anybody. Because it's not about you and what you want to do. It's not about your credentials. It's not about what I've done before. It's not about that I can sell their home in seven days. That's what I could do. But what what do they want me to do? So the most important thing is that beginning piece where that's called a needs analysis. You do it with buyers, you do it with sellers, you do it with anybody you're trying to sell anything to. So my, why do you want to move? Why do you want to move? Yeah. Okay. What are you looking to do? Why, why, why? What does that mean to you? What does this house mean to you? You, you, you. What have you done? What kind of experience do you have with buying and selling homes? All that kind of stuff. 
the more questions you ask, the more deeper you get with them. And then when you get to the rest of it, they're going to trust you a little bit more because you've gone deep with them. Quick question. Um, so let's say you're explaining the, that page of your comparative market analysis where it explains 5 to 10% under market mm -hmm. buyers. So let's say you're explaining this and you show them all the comps and then they ask you, okay, well, if we go 10% under, under what number? How would you respond to that? If they were going to say that? What number do we base one under from? You base, you, off of, like you base it off of comparable sold. So I know you mentioned the average list price of those comps, but. So here's the sold. So I don't go 10%. I don't say that. Okay. I don't have a percentage. I look at what are other people selling listing for and who got the most amount of money. And it would be smart to probably copy them if they're within range. Within like a couple months. Yeah, so look at these ones. So 730, all the people that listed above 600 didn't get as much as the people that listed below. So here's one. This is a comparable property. So you got to give someone room to budge if they can really afford 700000 Yeah. So if you look at it below, you have to give them room to be like, look what I'm doing. Yep, I'm giving you more. Everybody's trying to compete. Everybody's trying. So my buyers, when my buyers go out, like I have a buyer that's pre approved for 400, 450 right now. We are looking at homes at 400 grand. We do not look at homes at 450. So if I price this house at five, 750, what are buyers thinking? How much do they have to pay for this house if it's priced at 750 or more? Yeah. 800, right? So if your home is worth 750, buyers are right now believe they have to pay 750 for any house they want at 699. So we we have to price it as they say. So that way that buyers will show up and actually be able to compete. Otherwise, they're gonna see 750. They're gonna think, damn, I gotta pay 750 plus another 50 grand. That house ain't worth eight, worth 800 grand. That's how they're gonna think. Half of these agents are gonna be like, they don't pull comps before they look at home. I don't pull comps before we look at home. I send you homes and you let me know which homes you want to see, and then we go look at homes. And then if you like that home, I'll pull comps. So if the pricing is wrong from the beginning, the buyer's gonna be like 750. Well, I can't afford that. I'm not looking at it. That's why it's so important. To make sure that you price it. So if somebody came at me, that's what I explained to them. Here's what we're working with, man. We're gonna have, if we want to price it at 750, you're gonna get an offer at 760. It's gonna be your only offer. They're gonna do inspection. They're gonna beat you up, and that's gonna be your only offer. And you're gonna have to do whatever they say to keep it in the contract, or else you're gonna have to go back on the market. Now it's been on the market for three weeks. Now you've got inspection. And people are going to be like, why has it been on the market? And so people long? are going to be like, why has it been on the market so long? Every other house sells in four days. Yeah. So in this situation, especially with our current market, um, if she hasn't already purchased another property, what do you do when it it sells in four days? Well, it doesn't actually sell. You still have thirty That's days to grow. Yes, but if she sells so it's contingent. Home, it's contingent on a, on her selling. And then she's, I get them a 60 day rent back so that way we can go look for another property. Okay. Let's say they, because obviously like online stuff offers, uh, we'll buy your home now so you can buy it on home first. Mm -hmm. so what do you think about uh, talking to people about that? They're going to buy it at a significant discount. You're not, you're not going to get 180% the list price. You're going to get uh, 95, 80 to 95% because they're gonna come in and offer you a price. They're gonna send a contractor over. They're gonna tell you that they're doing an evaluation and really they have a general contractor come in and report every single thing that's wrong with the property. And then they come back to you and say, now we're gonna dock off 14, 15, $16,000. And then you're also paying their 7% convenience fee. It's 7%? It could be. What are you guys talking about? Um, I buyers. <laughs> <laughs> I buyers. Yeah, because uh, I have a friend that's doing it right now, and he told me that they're going to list it, and he's going to get nearly, you know, wherever wherever it ends up in the market. But I've never looked into it, so I don't know. Yeah, they're going to list, so they're going to buy it from him, right? They gave him like 85 percent, so he they gave him eight, they gave him eighty five percent for now, and they're going to market after he buys. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know about that. That's cool. I didn't know about that. Something through home ladder. 
Oh, that's cool. Do you get to be the agent or it's only the agent? Hi. I'm uh, the Guys, uh, people are still listening to what we're talking about. Hey, guys, we'll be meeting Melinda. People are still listening to what we're talking about. Oh, sorry. What do you want me to do? Well, he was asking questions and talking about the service. Oh, sorry. That's yeah, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll need to look into it for further. Obviously, it's not on part. Yeah, so I'll look. Yeah, we'll have to look into that too. So Home Light like is willing. It's kind of cool. And it's like a bridge loan, kind of. Kind of, yeah. But it, but it guaranteed that they would still market it and try to get as much as they could. Yeah, that's at good. A set fee. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I guess we have Home Light to look into now. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I appreciate it. Any questions from the Zoom people? Any questions from my Zoom folks? Nope. All good. Thanks, All right, Amy. Well, thank you so much for showing up. Have a great day.